Derek Leron Williams, born May 25, 1991. Sam Bowie, Darko Milicic, Robert Swift, Adam Morrison, Anthony Bennett, and yeah, you guessed it, Derek Williams. All names that are synonymous with the unspoken word amongst NBA players, bust. A word I'm sure none of them ever want to hear with their name in the same sentence. Also a word you couldn't tell any of them they'd end up being. You start to wonder, what's the life of an NBA bus? What sort of daily scrutiny or mental struggle such public failure brings them? I wonder do they even care? Or f*** it, at least I got a bag, right? What makes a guy like Anthony Bennett with so much God-given talent and production from one level completely flatten out at the next when it's all the same game and your size still translates? I can understand a guard not living up to the hype when size and physicality play a huge difference changing levels, but 6'8", 6'9", and you can continue to be the beast that got you drafted with the number one, number two pick? It's mind boggling, but let's try to understand this specific prospect who seemed like a can't miss guy in his second year of college. What made him completely be trash from day one? Well, here's three reasons that make it a little more clear. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get him, man. Stunt number one mental makeup. With all that said, being that physically gifted to play the sport of basketball with all the apparent tools that allowed you to dominate on a level not extremely far from that of the NBA, and if it is, at least it's the highest level you could imagine playing on as an amateur. It's not like dude played at Weber State or some. So not being able to translate has to come down to you weren't the right fit for the level mentally and when you got there, the stage was just too big for you. It all makes sense in hindsight. Derek is a California native that grew up pretty under the radar in his small city of La Mirada, ranked as the 27th best player at his position and just inside the top 100 overall. No one thought he'd step onto the floor at Arizona and have the career he did, a complete night and day. And why is that? Well, a huge part of the reason is, if you take a look at Arizona's roster in his first and second years, you'd see how depleted of high-level talent it had. In his two seasons there, the only other NBA-level talent he played with was Solomon Hill, and at Arizona, no one expected Hill to become an NBA player like he did based on the production, or lack thereof, on a roster that could have used it. Derek had the ultimate green light and took advantage of being in the perfect place and time. He was comfortable and had the entire program backing him. Mentally, that's a lot easier than coming into the league as the number two pick. In an era where your size at 6'7", 6'8", was the prototypical want for teams, and his athleticism being unrivaled made him even more enticing. Therefore, the same things that made Anthony Bennett the number one pick were the reasons teams were sold on Derrick Williams, and so was I. After seeing how he completely dominated Duke in the NCAA tournament, I was sold as well. Williams had a career-high 32 points along with 13 rebounds to lead Arizona in an upset victory over the number one seeded Duke by 16 points to advance to the Elite Eight. From that point, Williams was all set to be a star and rocketing up everyone's draft boards. But you can't test mentality. If so, you know the vibes. With the first pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. Stunt number two, timing is as they say, everything. Derek was as I imagine, breathtaking in workouts, with his high motor and unbelievable combination of finesse and strength dunking the basketball. To the point, the Minnesota Timberwolves took him with the second pick behind Kyrie Irving. Now, I don't know what it is about the T-Wolves, but they just can't seem to get what they're doing together and build anything. All the way back to the Garnett days, they just haven't had the best luck or right personnel for success. From Garnett wanting out, Kevin Love, Jimmy Butler, passing on Steph to draft Johnny Flynn and Rubio, trading for Wiggins and him being underwhelming, trading Zach Levine, who seems to be on the verge of superstardom, to drafting this guy. Not in any order, but this franchise just can't seem to get it done. 
For Derek, the climate around his early situation played a huge role in him not being as productive as he should have. He came in as the number two pick, but immediately played second fiddle to Kevin Love and even Mike Beasley, who was coming off his best pro season. They also had a slew of wing players in each of his seasons there, who they didn't seem to know what to do with. Add to that, the team was losing, a lot, and lost trust in their coaching. This climate wasn't suited for Williams, not to mention coming from Cali to Arizona to Minnesota. I know this sounds like a lot of excuses for a guy that was given more than most. And you're right, at the end of the day, you still have to play. You still owe the team that invested in you more than 8 points a game, 4 rebounds, 41% from the field, 26 from 3, and 69% from the foul line? Which brings me to... Stunt number 3, Derek Williams was exposed. All excuses aside, let's call it like it is. Williams was just never that good. He had two amazing seasons at Arizona, parlayed that into millions of dollars, lost that confidence he had there, turned Rasta, partying weekend after weekend, to the point having $750,000 worth of jewelry and money stolen by some thoughts, to not coming into seasons in shape. This was all a byproduct of a guy that let the going get tough and he relaxed. Looking at his numbers before the NBA, you wouldn't think he would come in and shoot so poorly from literally everywhere, but he did. A big reason also was the fact that Derek was playing out of his position the entire time. He's really a power forward that isn't tall enough to play there in the league and doesn't have a high enough motor slash effort as well. Transitioning to playing the wing when you can't shoot the NBA 3, can't create for yourself at all, and don't have the confidence to hold a ball for 10 seconds, clear out, and either post up or make a solid basketball play is where he fell short. Williams would play for the Sacramento Kings, Knicks, Miami, Cleveland, Lakers, and never produce anything above bus numbers, and I completely understand if he's added to the list of names I opened with. The only difference is that for him, there was reason to believe he would be different. As we see, he wasn't. It's your boy JC Stunnick Growth, and I'm out.